when you come to Plum Village in France to visit in the month of uh, March, you, can, you may see bare um, hills around. Even when you come to uh, by April, you don't see much, but uh, the farmers have already ploughed the land and planted the seeds of uh, sunflowers. So at that moment, the month of May, when the farmer went through that field, uh, they can already see the sunflowers in their mind, because they know that they have planted the seeds. You come in the month of uh, July, June or July, you see a lot of sunflowers very ex uh, manifesting very beautiful, be beautifully around Plum Village. So when you do not see the sunflowers, that does not mean that the sunflower is not are not there. They are there, but they have not manifested to you. It's like in winter, we don't see uh, butterflies and uh, other kind of uh, dragonflies and so on. And you may, have, you may have the impression that they have they they are already they have already all of them have already died but when spring come they manifest again so the notion of being and non-being are also signs and we should uh, should be caught in the signs. Suppose I draw a line representing time from left to right, and I mark one point to be the date of my birth, B. And that is the beginning of all confusion. I have the concept that uh, I, I continue to be from this point on. And before that, I must be described as non-being. And if I take another point, marking my death, D, and then I would say that this segment BD is uh, represent my being. And the segment uh, preceding it as must be my non-being. From non-being, I become being. And from being, I will become non-being again. That's the way many people look. But as we know, like in the case of uh, the cloud, a cloud has not come from nothing. A cloud has to come from something. The ocean, the lake, the river. So that moment, so-called birth, is only a moment of continuation. The Buddha said that when the body manifests, 
when conditions come together and the body manifests together with the feelings and mental formations. After the manifestation, before the manifestation, you cannot ascribe to it the notion of non-being. And after the manifestation, you cannot uh, apply the notion of being to it either. Because reality transcends both the notion of being and non-being. Being and non-being are only signs, are are only notions that cannot be applied to reality. The ultimate transcends both the notion of birth and death, the notion of being and non-being. There are holy theologians like Paul Tillich who describe God as the ground of being. the ground of everything that is. That can, that can be very upsetting because if God is the ground of being and then who will be the ground of non-being? <coughs> being is the opposite notion of non-being. And these are only, only notions, are only nimittas. outside appearance and reality transcend both being and non-being. And many people have spent a lot of time to discuss whether God exists or doesn't exist. And they have written volumes on that question whether God exists or does not exist. But if God is the ultimate (coughs) and then God transcend would transcend the idea of being and non being (coughs) to say that God exists is wrong and to say that God does not exist is equally wrong. Because the reality of God transcends both the notion of being and non being. And that way, we can save a lot of saliva. (laughs) We can save a lot of ink and paper. (laughs) So the teaching of signlessness is very helpful. It helps us to break through to the curtain of uh, sign, notions, in order for us to experience the truth that transcends all kind of notions, all kind of signs, all kind of appearances. Anyone has a bo- box of match? We are going to uh, inquire about another pair of notions. I was looking for the flame, but I did not see it. We have the impression that the flame is somewhere there, hidden. Hidden. (laughs) 
we know that the flame is available to light the candle. We don't want to describe that flame as non-being. My dear little flame, I know you are there somewhere. I feel it. Why don't you manifest yourself? We need you to light a candle. You don't even have a candle. <laughs> You can talk already to the flame. My dear little flame, I know, we know you are somewhere there. I don't want to describe you in terms of non-being. I know that, deeply, I know that. I know you are already in the conditions that will come together and help yourself manifest. And you are hidden in inside and you are hidden also outside because I know that the oxygen outside is very crucial for your manifestation. Without oxygen, the flame cannot manifest. Oxygen is one of the conditions for the manifestation of uh, the flame. So with uh, every condition uh, available, I need only to add the last condition, which is a gesture of my, uh, of my two fingers. Then the flame manifests herself beautifully. I would like to call it a manifestation, not a birth. Because before the manifestation, she already she was already there somewhere in her conditions. And I know the nature of the flame is the nature of no birth and no death. Even I don't see the flame anymore. So we might talk to the flame, my dear little flame, where are you now? Where have you come from? And where are you? gone now? And this is a, a deep question. If we uh, just uh, lost one uh, person who died, we might like to ask that question, my beloved one, where have, have you come from and where have you gone? Why you leave me alone? So this meditation will provide us with the answer. And if we listen to the flame, which is not described as non-being, can talk to the flame and the flame will answer us. Dear flame, where have you come from? And if we listen with the deep uh, concentration, we will hear something like this. Dear Thay Dear Sangha, I have come from nowhere. <laughs> My nature is no coming. I have not come from the north, from the south, from the east, from the west, from the center, from the above, from the below. When things come together, when conditions come together sufficiently, I, manif I manifest myself. I have not come, I do not come from somewhere, from, from anywhere. And we know that uh, the flame has uh, told the truth. Her nature is no coming. Our nature is also like that. The nature of our beloved one is also like that. We have not come from anywhere. When conditions come together, and then we manifest. And when conditions are no longer sufficient, we just stop our, our manifestation in order to wait for another manifestation. My dear little flame, 
Where have you gone now? n i r v a n a Oh, where? And we can still uh, continue to listen to the flame, and we hear something like this: "Dear t a i d e s a n g a and I have not gone anywhere. I have not gone to the south, nor to the neither to the north, or to the east, or to the west. When things are no longer, when conditions are no longer, are no longer sufficient, I just stop manifestation, and I." May manifest otherwise. There was one thing we did not notice during the short time of manifestation of the flame. The flame uh, offer light. The flame of the uh, offer has offer light, has offer uh, heat, has offer uh, water, has offer uh, uh, smoke, and that is the continuation of the flame. And the flame has entered the cosmos during her pre- her, her brief presence. The heat, the light of the flame has penetrated into my body, into yours, into the cosmos, and you can see the continuation of the flame somewhere, anywhere. You cannot say that uh, uh, the flame is now waiting for another manifestation. She has already manifested in se- several forms: the heat, the light, and so on. So looking deeply, we can realize that the true nature of the flame is the nature of no coming and no going. There's only manifestation. And that is also our true nature, and the true nature of our beloved one. And if we have the time to practice and to touch our nature of no birth, no death, no being, no non-being, no coming, no going, and then we be liberated from our fear, our anger, our despair. Let us now come to another pair of opposite, a pair of uh, signs, a pair of uh, nimitta, sameness, otherness. When the flame uh, manifests herself, we might like to ask her whether she is the same flame that had manifested before, or she is totally a new one. You ask the question, and I light the candle. And we have uh, appearance of three, three flames and two.
Let us uh, ask this flame, my dear little flame, I know you are there. Tell me, are you the same flame with uh, the other one? Or are you a different one, a totally different one? We know very well that if the other was not there, this one is, will be impossible. So that is also the relationship between the father and the son, the mother and the son and the daughter. You may still keep your family album and you can see yourself as a five-year-old little boy or little girl. And you ask that little boy, little girl in the album, you ask yourself, are you the same with that little boy or little girl, or you are now a different person? You still bear the same name, the same family name, the same uh, first name, but you have changed so much in forms, in, in your form, in your feelings, in your perceptions, in your uh, mental formation, in your consciousness. You are quite different from the five-year-old child. So the question is whether you are the same with the child or you are a totally different person. And the answer, the only answer is neither the same nor a different one. So our nature transcends the notion of sameness and otherness. And you can see that in the relationship between father and son also. When you plant a seed of corn, the seed of corn will become a plant of corn. And if you look uh, at the plant of corn with the eyes of signlessness, you can still see the seed of corn alive. The seed of corn has not died. In the Gospel, it is said that uh, when the grain dies, see, see uh, if the grain does not die, then how could the plant uh, be possible? See, look. See the grain emerge, but the the seed, the grain, does not really die. It continues in the plant. So looking deeply into the sun, you can see the mother, you can see the father, you can also see the ancestors. And you can see everything in there, including culture, spiritual tradition, food, art, everything. You are truly a multitude. You contain the whole cosmos within yourself, available, everything is available in you. So with that kind of insight, no discrimination is no longer possible. No fear, no anger, no hate is possible anymore. Because you have got the insight of no coming, no going, no sameness, no otherness. And if a father and son live with that wisdom, there will be perfect happiness. Because father is son, son is father. The suffering of the father is the suffering of the son. The suffering of the son is the suffering of the father. The happiness of the mother is the happiness of the daughter, and vice versa.
Prajna Paramita is uh, the kind of perfect wisdom that can carry us to the other shore. And uh, that kind of insight, that kind of uh, perfect understanding is the factor of uh, liberation. As you know that uh, in Buddhism we do not speak of salvation in terms of grace but uh, rather in terms of uh, insight, in, in terms of perfect uh, understanding. It would be a pity if uh, you come to the Dharma and you do not have access to this kind of teaching, this kind of practice. Because practicing the Dharma, you can get a relief from your fear, your anger, your suffering. But the greatest relief you get only when you touch your true nature. The nature of no birth, no death. No being, no non-being. No coming, no going. No sameness. No otherness. And your true nature transcends all kind of descriptions, all kind of notions. And that true nature is uh, completely silent concerning notions and signs. And that nature is Nirvana. Nirvana is uh, our true nature. transcending all forms of uh, notions and concepts. And our true nature, we don't have to look for it. We are already that nature. Suppose you observe uh, a wave coming up, going down, in order to come up again. A cloud can be described in terms of uh, coming up, going down. Higher or lower than other waves. more or less vigorous than other waves, more or less beautiful than the other waves. A wave can be described in terms of uh, beginning and ending, coming up and going down. But the wave is also at the same time water. Water is the true nature of the wave. We can speak about coming up, going down, beginning, ending, when we talk about the wave. But when we talk about the water, there is no coming up, going down, beginning, and ending. And a wave does not have to go and look for water. She is water in the here and the now. So my dear friends, you don't have to go and look for your true nature. You don't have to look for nirvana. You are in it, you are it. You need to wake up and then all confusion, all fear, all despair will be gone. A wave can live her life as a wave, of course, but she can learn to live her life as water also, at the same time. And if she knows that she is water, and then she will enjoy going up, and then she will enjoy going down, she's no longer afraid. 
is wonderful. And we can do like her, riding on the waves of birth and death and enjoy every moment because our true nature is no birth and no death, no being and non-being. We should not be afraid. The third door of liberation is uh, Apranihita. aimlessness apranihita apranihita means that you don't put in front of you something and you run after it. No purpose, no aim. You are not looking for something. What you want to be, you already are. A wave does not have to go and look for water. She is only water. If we think that we are still missing something, we are missing God, we are missing Nirvana, we are missing liberation, we are missing the pure land, we are missing the kingdom of God and we are trying to run to some direction in order to get it, uh, we are not practicing apranihita. Your true nature, as well as God, as well as uh, Buddhahood, as well as Nirvana, is available in the here and the now. You are in it. You don't have to look for nirvana. You have, don't have to seek for nirvana. You are nirvana yourself. You don't have to get anything to strive, to obtain anything. There's nothing to obtain. You are as wonderful as you are. You are the kingdom of God. You are the pure land of the Buddha. Uh, you, con you contain within yourself every uh, wonder, every wonder of life. And only when you realize that, when you realize that uh, you are already what you want to become, you are wonderful as you are, and then there will be a stop to running, striving, fighting. And only by then you have a true peace. As you continue to strive, to look for something, you are not at rest. But if you know that you are it, you already are it, and then you are in peace. Nothing to do, nowhere to go. You just enjoy. You just enjoy. Yourself is a marvel. Yourself is a mystery. Yourself is a wonder. 
and every moment of your life is a moment of enjoyment. You enjoy yourself, you enjoy life with all the wonders. And this is very characteristic of the Buddhist tradition. There is no purpose for the cosmos. In the Heart Sutra, we say, uh, there is no obtention because there is nothing to obtain. Everything is already there. Stop looking for something. Stop striving for something. You are already it. This is it. And this is a, another wonderful uh, door of liberation. And that could be understood uh, if uh, you already touch uh, the second door or the first door. A Buddha is first of all a human being. The basic condition to be a Buddha is to be a human being. And after you become a Buddha, you are still a human being. In my book, uh, All Path High Cloud, I tried my best to describe the Buddha as a human being. A number of Buddhists do not agree with that. They don't want the Buddha to be a human being. They don't want the Buddha to have the right to be a human being. <laughs> Perhaps you have heard about the film, Buddha film, that will be based on my book, O Path White Cloud. And the Buddha in that film should appear as a human being first. But there are Buddhists who do not agree with that. And that, therefore there, is, there has been difficulties. And maybe uh, the filmmaker cannot uh, make a real film uh, based on uh, all path white cloud. If Buddha is a god, and then what hope can we have? Because uh, we cannot do like him. But if Buddha is a human being, and then everything is possible, we can all of us can do like him. And that is why it's very important to present the Buddha as a human being. And uh, we. Most of us belong to the Linji uh, tradition, Rinzai. And the teaching of Rinzai, of Linji, is very, very clear. Buddha is a human being. And if you look uh, for Buddha outside of living beings, there's no hope that you can find him. You have to look at living beings in order to find a Buddha. The non-duality between Buddha and living beings. A Buddha is a living being, and every living being can be a Buddha. That is the basic teaching of Buddhism, and Master Linji has it very firmly. And Buddhism is a very powerful uh, teaching of humanism. It's a strong humanism, Buddhism.
when we practice uh, looking deeply in our daily life, we be able to touch our true nature, to see our true nature. That is a Zen uh, expression. Seeing your true nature, it means touching Nirvana. And your true nature is not something abstract. It's very real, very concrete. It's this nature of no birth, no death, no coming, no going, no sameness, no otherness, no being, no non-being. And, and you can you can see that a scientist can freely make inquiry into into this uh, true nature. The scientists they still use uh, mathematics and instruments in order to to measure to count. But the spiritual practitioner does not need any instrument outside his or her own mind. Our mind is a wonderful instrument. When our mind is free from anger, craving, hate, it's very clear. And with that wonderful instrument, we can break through to the nature of nirvana, the nature of no birth, no death. And when we have done that, we have great freedom. We become a Bodhisattva, and we can be engaged in the world, helping living beings without fear, without having to make compromise, because you are not, no longer afraid of anything anymore, including death and non-being. And the career of a Bodhisattva is a very beautiful one. And we have examples like uh, Avalokiteshvara, who practice, uh, practices looking deeply and listening with uh, compassion. The Bodhisattva Samantha Bhadra, the, the Bodhisattva of great action. The Bodhisattva uh, Shitikapa, who uh, try to go into realms of being that are very dark, very tragical, without fear. And uh, the presence of such, such bodhisattvas can bring a lot of light and relief. And each of us, 